professor of psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin Medical School, giving my 10th of 36 lectures weekly. Today's lecture is called Isolated Will Takes on Demonic Family Systems. Now, all of these lectures are subject, um, in all of them, is the decisive importance of positioning. Quite as in chess. Today's problem of positioning in psychiatry concerns family systems that are getting noth nothing less than demonic in their destructiveness and intransigence. If you are to meet them, you will need to know a great deal about how they work and how to position yourself for what little is possible. Yet, this little can save lives from going down in, their, in these vortices, the plural of vortex like a hurricane or a tornado. Quite as positioning is crucial to save yourself in a tornado or hurricane. Now, there are family systems so richly joined, in other words, the same loops over and over again, thousands and perhaps millions of times, that they're impossible to change. Nevertheless, they call out enormous energy or this isolated will, that's part of my title today, in the attempt to change them, all to no avail. From over 40 years of study in the field of family therapy, I am of the opinion that such families are extremely common. You wouldn't know it from surveying the literature, which is full of endless devices, techniques of every kind possible which give the impression there's nothing that can't be solved in family therapy. The only prominent exception to this rule is the work of Mara Salvini Palazzoli and her Milan team, family therapy team, which gives to me, at least, an adequate account of the common difficulty without underestimating it. I spent 10 years studying her work and in fact, in this very room, conducted a team, a Milan family therapy team for 10 years. And so we'd met with the most formidable of families right here. And I do all the time in doing individual work. The Milan team was often criticized for being too negative about families. Look it up in the literature and you'll hear a lot of complaining about them. And, and too negative about the members of these families. I think she was actually understating the problem with deliberate irony. I think that virtually impossible family systems are commonplace, and I think it would be a service to recognize how and why this is the case. Furthermore, I think that this relatively simple structure has much to do with being enmeshed with modern culture itself, and I will explain that. It's a microcosm of modern culture, a, a, a vortex family. This relatively commonplace and simple and violent vortex structure uh, is a mirror of corporate life itself, and now we'll have a look at it up there. Uh, you can look in the whiteboard. Um, that's a vortex counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, as you may know, about vortices. Now I'll tell you, uh, we'll keep the camera up there as I explained to you by the vortex what I mean. I mean See that chair in the middle there? That's called a, a throne. A, a Gaman calls this a, an empty throne of glory. There are families in which certain persons ha sit in empty thrones of glory, and they rule by fear. A Gaman thinks this is the dominant structure of power in the West for the last 2,000 years. That and then it sucks everything into its into its uh, strange attractor like a black hole into a magnetic field. It operates on all scales as a fractal. Second, I mean that this generates a compartment in which it's exhausting to exist. Thirdly, I mean that its members have no exit. Litz called this situation a rubber fence. because attempts to leave it seem possible, but are snapped back by fear of being left out altogether. Essentially, this is the structure of, of corporate life in, in its most dire aspect, 
such as described by Karen Ho recently. She was on, on uh, all the news, uh, uh, her ethnography of Wall Street in firms of investment banking. But you can find the same structure in law firms and medical hierarchies and academic departments and every other compartment of work. All right, Ed, you can. Oh, and I want to say one more thing about this. Um, the structure at the bottom there is a, is a little mound of a hill from which one can see the whole battlefield, as we've been talking about, and you're out of harm's way. I'm going to essentially be saying that the, that the way you help, you're helpful in, in, a, in a small way, but that saves lives, is you basically help people to get out of position one and into position two. You cannot do things from position one, either as a, as a member of the family or as, or as a doctor or as a relative. All right, now, Ed, you can come back here. All right, now I'm going to give you a particularly malignant version of this to, to make it as graphic as possible. Strange to say, uh, this is not often described, but we have an epidemic of it in Wisconsin, and our clinics are full of its casualties. The version I am thinking of is fueled by raw thirst for power, but also by raw lust of a dominant male. I will not take up the opposite version, rotating into the force of a dominant field. For, there, for lack of time in 10 minutes, so there are plenty of those. And you can look at Salvini Palazzoli. And Milan seemed to have a, a very many powerful females that uh, sat in the empty throne of glory. All it takes is a violent male with a lust for total control. Control is not strong enough a word. Total possession is accurate. Of course, pornography feeds this appetite. Abetted by nearly, nearly continuous stimulation by television and movies, if you want it. Regardless, surveillance of the wife nails it down. This is a particularly malignant aspect of these, these kind of operators. The implacable hatred of her outside connections, especially women friends, cuts off avenues of support for her to oppose his total possession. The Salvini Palazzoli uh, demonstrated such a, now you see why I use the word demonic, Rachel, that's what I mean. It is demonic. Calls out epic attempts to bring it to justice by the spouse or by one of the children triangulated with, with the wife. Children often get drawn into the battle to save the mother from the father in this situation. As, as uh, Salvini and, and so on just demonstrated, the doctor or therapist or team engaged by the dangerous game tends to become ensnared either by the one in power, the, the male, dominant male, or by the victim or victims. In this, if this all-possessing male captures the helpers, backing his demands that the wife should go along with him, she is driven into despair and he into great, even greater claims upon the, on the wife. If they are captured by her demands for less pressure from him, he is not about to give up one whit and will become paranoid about the so-called helpers and quit the therapy at once. Of course, some helpers will try to find a balance point between the, the husband and wife, um, understanding both equally, giving each equal turns, but there is no such balance point in a paranoid system like this. All right, now we come down to the last section of the lecture called Individual Psychotherapy. Thus, the patient, the wife, will be thrown back upon her own doctor. You guys. Um, here the doctor or therapist will find him or herself with the problem not of improving things, but doing what little he can to help her not put herself in serious danger of getting hurt or even killed. The dilemma is that staying and going are both dangerous. If the patient stays, she is highly likely to build up rage at being demeaned by his pornography, his surveillance, his hatred of her having any friends or connections besides him. She may think she can put up with this for 10 or 20 years until the children are, are grown up and out of the family, and then she'll leave. Um, but her weekly or monthly cycle shows she is tempted to get him back especially embarrassing him in one way or another. And this calls out murderous rage in him, in which she way underestimates. 
If the patient attempts to leave, she may find that his rubber fence for possessing her knows no bounds. We have several of these going on in the clinic right now. Having no other connection but her, he may follow her just about anywhere and visit his violence upon her. All of which is not to say that catastrophe is inevitable. Her best chance for, is for him to fix his claims on a different woman, frankly. That's why sometimes a divorce and then they're able, even very scary divorces happen, but then he gets attached to someone else and then, the, then she's, that's the only real release from these people. Now, Ed, can we go back to the board? In other words, the, in coming into the last two paragraphs of the lecture, I want to say, in other words, as long as she's in position one, it's, 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 it's dangerous to stay there. It's dangerous to try to get out of the thing. You see what I mean now? That's the dilemma of these cases. Position two is where, we, where you need to be in the first place and where she needs to get to. And that means not being tempted to go in and, and, and you know, these these women, especially if they have a lot of spirit, they're very tempted to try to unseat this demonic power because it's so unjust, very dangerous. All right, Ed, we can come back here and we'll finish the lecture. The doctor's or therapist's best chance with the wife, in my opinion, is to clarify her own isolated will. Thus, any eruptions of her will will get to get him back, will be backtracked to her notion that he ought to be different. Any damn well ought to be different. But he's not about to, in the slightest. This notion of hers always comes from a childhood of very serious hurt, which generates some kind of fiction or fairy tale about what is coming to save her. And you've all seen many versions of this. Understandable, but not so. As Winnicott demonstrated, this will need a lot of reaching back to her grief as a child. For example, such a girl uh, downtrodden by her mother while, while her father did nothing to back her, is highly apt to conceive of a princess in a Grimm's fairy tale that will be demonstrated, you can demonstrate it, see it demonstrated in her dreams. Such a dream kept hope going, so there was something good in it. Positioning with her in such a dream, in such a basic fault, and how bad it felt can give her the company never given by her own father, by you. When she accepts this, she may begin to forego this forcing operation of isolated will upon a demonic system which is highly dangerous. Thank you.